The Ring of Brodgar. The Ring of Brodgar is the largest stone circle in Scotland and is like a crown of Neolithic Britain. It is a major component of Orkney's World Heritage Sites. The surrounding landscape is full of prehistoric sites and was no doubt a very important location for the prehistoric people. The Ring of Brodgar is situated on a thin strip of land which bisects freshwater loch of Haray with the saltwater loch of Stenness. In the Neolithic era, water levels were lower. The Ness of Brodgar landscape area is a beautiful location with the Ring of Brodgar intentionally placed in a 360 degree natural amphitheatre. The ring was scheduled in 1882, making it one of the first historical sites to be protected. The site is now in the care of Historic Environment Scotland. It's been suggested the surrounding sites were used as lunar observatories. It's highly likely the ancient people carefully selected this location for astronomical observations. Prominent hills of the island of Hoy in the distance seem to be significant as the midwinter sun sets into the large gap. The circle was carefully erected on slightly sloping ground like Stonehenge. The ring is 104 metres wide with the ring plus ditch expanding to 130 metres. The standing stones range in height from just over 2 metres to more than 4.5 metres high. A near perfect circle of 36 stones remain. Originally it is thought there were 60. The ring came into state care in 1906 with 13 of the stones being re-erected. The circle is still very well preserved. The ring is thought to date to between 2500 BC to 2000 BC, which makes the circle 500 years younger than the other sites at the Ness of Brodgar. Archaeologists think the sites would have served a ceremonial, ritual and social function while paying acknowledgement to the ancestors. Certain stones have fallen naturally or have been pushed over. In Edwardian times, some were re-erected while others are still recumbent. One megalith was struck by lightning in 1980. Others have remained upright and have stood the test of time for over four millennia. Some of the megaliths have well-defined shapes. One is very similar to a human profile, where you can make out a head, torso, arms and legs. Perhaps this is an ancestor overlooking or guarding the site. There are two entrances into the ring, one at the southeast and another at the northwest. These entrances are wide enough for two people standing side by side to enter or exit. The ditch does not have an outer bank, however, the first account of the circle in 1529 by Joe Ben has a bank reported. Material from the ditch went into the internal area. The surplus material may have been used for the surrounding mounds. During excavations, the ditch was found to be nearly 10 metres wide by nearly 3.5 metres deep and the sides were also found to be steeper. Archaeologists excavated three thin trenches in 1973. This is the only archaeological records to date. They found no evidence for a bank. A 19th century report of turf stripping took place. Geophysical surveying has shown archaeology very little and the circle's interior remains unexcavated. Surrounding the Ring of Brodgar is at least 13 so-called burial mounds. The youngest may date to 1500 BC. The oldest may precede the circle and explain the position and erection of the ring. Unmedothical excavations of these mounds took place in the 18th and 19th centuries. These prehistoric mounds have modern names like Plum Cake Mound, South Mound, Fresh Snow and Salt Snow. These sites are reminiscent of the mounds surrounding Stonehenge but on a much smaller scale. Scottish geologist Hugh Miller visited in 1846 and quoted, They look like an assemblage of ancient druids, mysteriously stern and invincibly silent and shaggy. 
Professor Alexander Tom, the Scottish archaeo astronomer, and preface to his book Megalithic Remains in Britain, wrote, Here, as in no other place, there are enough remains to prove conclusively that the movements of the moon were being fully observed. 